So winter is on its last leg. January is behind us. February is here in the hope of spring is on the horizon for next month. And moving away from some of the more dark, brooding, and masculine fragrance that I incline towards in January, February is a time where I really like to reach for some more rich, sensual, and sensitive style fragrances. And these are the top 10 that I'll be sharing with you today, so stay tuned. Peace be with you everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Trevor, very grateful to have you here. And in today's video I'll be sharing with you my top 10 picks for the month of February. So this was a little bit difficult for me to wind down and choose only 10 for this list. Had a lot of options here, a lot of somewhat redundant fragrances. Uh, the major notes that are gonna be showing up in today's list are going to be rose, obviously, chocolate, iris and vanilla these four notes really epitomize the tones of the fragrances which i like to wear in the month of february so with no particular order here maybe just in terms of starting with the cheapest moving into the most expensive We've got number 10 on this list, Roberto Cavalli Womo, my scent of the day. I actually do have a full review on this one if you want to check it out on my channel. But what I love about this fragrance is that it has a very velvety textural feel to it. So there's a violet note in here that gives it this kind of wet feeling, but not not so wet per se, but yeah, there's like that velvety texture. Like it's something solid that feels like it has like a nice wavy quality to it. It's also dipped in honey, so you can get that kind of wet feeling from the violet with a creamy, uh, syrupy, almost vi or a honey note, but it's not synthetic in any way. Uh, just a really beautiful fragrance. It kind of breaks down a little bit more towards the dry down and becomes somewhat generic, but the overall wearing experience is very nice. There's a little bit of a powdery texture textural feel as well from the way that the tonka bean interacts with the florals in here and it's just a really beautiful dark sweet floral masculine fragrance definitely well worth the money i think it's been on its way out in terms of getting discontinued used to be able to pick it up for under forty dollars i think you still can on fragrance net but their prices are going up on this one so definitely pick it up while you can roberto cavalli Womo at the number 10 spot Okay, number nine spot. This is Rojas Man Intense. So Rojas Man, the original, is a fragrance that is a little bit sweet for me in terms of uh, my personal tastes, but it's definitely one of my most complimented fragrances that I've worn. This newer version here, or the re-release of this one, as I think they originally launched this one earlier on and then brought it back, has this dry roasted coffee textural feel to it, whereas the original has this more creamy cappuccino vibe going on this one's a little bit more dry and roasted feeling to me a little bit more pronounced lavender as well and so i feel like this one comes off a little bit more masculine leaning and i really enjoy the scent profile of this one i think the adjustments in this one make it a little bit more inclined towards my taste than the original i think this one you can find for right around 40 dollars the original hangs out around 25 to 30. i think both are great options but this one just is a little bit more my speed and one, like I said, the original has gotten me lots of compliments. This one's a little bit newer to the collection, so I haven't had as much time to introduce it to the public and garner compliments with it, but the DNA is similar enough that I think this one will do you right if that's what you're looking for. And the overall scent profile, like I said, is a very nice, rich lavender and coffee note and perfumed by Maurice Rossell. So definitely something worth checking out for this month of February at the number nine spot. Okay, the number eight spot. This is a beautiful fragrance. It's definitely a hidden gem. I don't think hardly anyone on YouTube is speaking about this one, and it is a limited release run. They only issue this fragrance every winter. So definitely pick it up right now if you can. This is Dark Suede from Hawthorne. So if you are on Facebook or social media, you may have gotten a targeted advertisement from Hawthorne. This is a somewhat of an indie house, but they have commissioned 
professional perfumers to do their fragrances. This one was perfumed by Olivier Guillotine, I believe, who is the same perfumer or nose behind Tobacco Vanille. They also have a lot of fragrances that were perfumed by Rodriguez Flores Rue, who is the in-house perfumer of John Barbados. And I think they have one or two fragrances from Quentin Bish. This one, however, is a really beautiful almost chocolate soaked fig there's no chocolate note listed in here i think it's like fig whiskey maybe cardamom and suede or leather the the leather in here is definitely leaning towards the suede side of things it gives a little bit of a velvety textural feel as well the whiskey note is really well done kind of reminds me a little bit of Baranda from Nasamato and the fig in here is like the main player for me at least very fruity Sensual deep and like I said gives a little bit of a chocolatey nuance So this is actually the fragrance that I decided to put in this list over Van Cleef and Arpel's orchid leather, which I think is constructed rather similarly to this It has that nice suede sweet sensual fruity vibe with plum in there instead of fig But this one I think is just a little bit more masculine Whereas that one leans a little bit more feminine and floral. So really, really beautiful stuff. Definitely check this one out. Going to be getting a lot of wares from me this February. So at the number 8 spot, this is Dark Suede from Hawthorne. You can get these for like 60 bucks, and they usually have coupon codes to bring the price down to like 50 55 Okay, moving on to the number 7 spot here. This is a fragrance that I've mentioned in I think my October list. It's one that wears very well in transitional seasons, but the main player in here is Rose, which is why I'm reaching for it in February here. It's a little bit spicy, a little bit dark, but highly floral, rose-centric. This is Moschino's Toy Boy. Highly polarizing fragrance as well. It is one of my more complimented fragrances. Um, but it does come off a little bit to some noses, I would say, like an old grandma. It definitely has that kind of potpourri style vibe going on with the way that the spices and the florals play in here. But I think this is a beautiful, rich, deep, sensual, almost a little bit latex feeling in terms of its texture. It almost has this plasticky feel to it. Like the, uh, I think this was based off of like a bondage gear. Uh, in terms of the marketing so it does have that latex kind of textural feel with everything going on but the the rose is kind of fresh and dewy and the spices really make it a little bit more dark and fitting for cold weather like we have here in February as well as in October and throughout the whole spring season this is just a really great versatile fragrance that wears very well throughout the course of the whole year and one of my favorite fragrances and easiest wares out of this list I would say probably one that I could get the most mileage out of or one of the ones I could get the most mileage out of so Moschino's Toy Boy coming in at the number seven spot okay the number six spot this is going to go to a fragrance that I have already gone through two bottles of this is already my third bottle and one that I think is very well suited for this month of February cherry vanilla leather and almond are gonna be the main players in here and despite those somewhat sweet fragrance notes this does come off in a masculine frame and is also one of my more most complimented fragrances in my collection this is Lome Ideal from Guerlain this is the Eau de Parfum version with the pink juice the bottle is a little bit different they have a silver plaque here now and I think all the caps have been standardized as black but I hear that their reformulations or the different issuings are not too detrimental to the scent profile and like I said just a beautiful powdery cherry almond leathery vanilla but somehow managing to stay very masculine despite those sweet both textures and fragrance notes really a all-star fragrance for the winter time and at under a hundred dollars this is a steal of a deal really high quality stuff from Guerlain as always so that is the number six spot Guerlain Lomidial EDP okay moving into the top five here um, we're gonna go ahead and go with this one for the number five spot this is one of the most affordable niche fragrances I, I believe their niche uh, this is the house of Caron and this is Pour Homme de Caron Le Soir another one that I think I featured in either my October or November list it has an oak note in here that really makes it nice woody and masculine but it kind of runs in the same scent profile vein as Le Malle Parfum so you get a, a iris lavender fragrance but this one I think is just a little bit better 
than the Le Mollet Parfum because of that oak in here that gives it this little bit of an extra textural feel, a little bit of extra dimension to it. Also a cypress note in here that plays very well in the winter time. Um, but as far as it being an affordable niche, I think you can find 50 ml bottles of this on Joma Shop for like $41. So it's right in the cheapy range and I highly, highly recommend picking this one up. Uh, and then even the 100 ml is only like 60, 65. So a steal, an absolute steal. One of my favorite iris fragrances in my entire collection. So that's Pour Homme de Caron Le Soir for the number five spot. Okay, going with another iris fragrance here at the number four spot. This one, I don't know if it's been discontinued or has moved into being in a European exclusive, but you can still find it at discounters for right around the 130 price range, which is a little bit high, but I think well worth the price. It is one of the best iris fragrances in my collection as well. Hard to say whether it's better than this or tied right along with it, but instead of the powdery, sort of sweet iris this one goes into the more soapy direction but keeps it well suited for winter with amber and patchouli to really make it dense and rich this is Prada Loam Intense probably not much of an introduction needed the line is rather famous in the fragrance community for good reason one of the best soapy iris fragrances if not the best line in that vein of fragrance profile and like I said the amber and patchouli really make this Nice, rich, sensual, and almost chocolatey in some sense. Perfect for the month of February here at the number four spot, Pratolome Intense. Okay, only three to go. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna order these ones, but we'll go ahead and make this the number three spot. This is Tom Ford's Noir de Noir. You really just get chocolate and roses with this fragrance. Now, there is an Armoth that clones this fragrance that is Club de Nuit Intense for Woman. I chose specifically not to include that one in the list because for me, that one off the cap smells amazing. It smells very close to this beautiful, chocolatey, rich rose fragrance. However, um, I owned that one first, uh, but decided to pick this one up Secondarily, because the Armoth goes a little bit musky, sharp, and metallic for my taste, and the rich, dense, chocolatey quality about it kind of fades away after the opening, whereas it sticks around the entire wearing experience with this fragrance. So I'm not sure if there's any other real good clones of this other than the Armoth. I would actually check out Sublime Rose from um, Angel Schlesher. That one kind of sits in between this and like Oud Satin Mood, but is a really great kind of um, Turkish Delight style fragrance, but kind of a classic for the Valentine's Day season. This is Tom Ford Noir de Noir, Chocolate and Roses. So that's the number three spot. Forgive me if I'm shaking a little bit. It's pretty cold out here today. My hands are getting a little bit uh, numb. Uh, okay, so for the number two spot, we are going to be going with Another classic in the community, this one I do recommend maybe just going out and finding a good clone of. I have, I think, one clone of this one, Frank Olivier Pure Addiction. I think that's a fine fragrance as well. If I had it, or uh, I haven't tried it yet, but Instant Crush is another one that I probably would have liked to have had to showcase in this list because I think the price is a little bit more reasonable. But this is none other than Baccarat Rouge 540 from Mason Francis Kirkjohn. Um, not really much of an introduction needed as well. It's a, one of the more famous fragrances. I think right up there with Aventus as being the most popular in the entirety of fragrance. This is basically like a little bit of a minty candy floss, uh, dental floss. So it's like cotton candy dental floss is really what this kind of smells like. It gives a little bit of this medicinal feel to it that keeps it very clean and crisp despite the sensual sweetness. And yeah, mostly those fragrance notes, accords, and textures. Really beautiful stuff and one of the easiest wears in this entire list right alongside of I would say Toy Boy and Roberto Cavalli Womo. And then moving into the number one spot, this is my favorite scent profile of all time. Uh, maybe not be the fragrance that I get the most wears or mileage out of because it's a little bit more of a special occasion style fragrance, but this is Dior Homme Parfum. And I think Dior Homme Intense might be a little bit of an easier wear, so you might be inclined to pick that one up. You can get some more mileage out of it because it's not as dressed up or special occasion, but 
Coincidentally, this one seems to be the most easy to get a hold of right now. I think they have it in stock on both Venba and FragranceBuy.ca at the moment, whereas Dior Homme Intense I don't think is really available at the discounters. So um, this one, chocolate, iris, um, I think there's rose and oud in here as well, but they're not really that prominent. You just get that really nice cacao powder, dark woody facet, and the best iris fragrance in my collection hands down so definitely check this one out if you haven't get a sample i just think this is a must own to be honest might be divisive if you don't like iris but this is just an absolute stunning stunning juice and my number one pick for the month of february 2024 so let me know in the comment section down below what your top picks for the month are going to be, what you're going to be wearing on Valentine's Day. And as always, I really appreciate you sticking with me to the end of the video. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.